Now, you may remember that a few months ago, Jason and I went to CBIT in Germany, Europe's largest tech show. And you may also remember that while we were there, we got a sneak preview of this, the Samsung Q1. Both Samsung and Microsoft were very excited. They saw it as a completely new class of computer, the ultra-portable PC. And the Q1 weighs just 800 grams, and its sleek tablet design is dominated by a 7-inch touchscreen. Inside, there's a 900 megahertz processor and a 40 gigabyte hard drive. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are built in, and it has a compact flash card reader. Its battery life, though, is a rather pitiful two and a half hours. So, should we all be rushing out to buy a Samsung Q1 and taking part in what we're told is a computing revolution? Or are there better ultra-portable PCs out there? Should you perhaps be going for something even smaller or something more conventional? Sony's Veo UX is a lot lighter than the Q1. It has a faster processor but a smaller hard drive. It does, though, have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a card slot and built-in fingerprint recognition. But like the Q1, its battery life is a disappointing two and a half hours. The Panasonic Let's Note is basically a small laptop. It's 200 grams heavier than the Q1, with a 1.2 gigahertz processor and a 60 gigabyte hard drive. It comes with all the ports and sockets you'd expect on a much bigger laptop, has a selection of card slots and boasts a whopping seven and a half hour battery life. So, are these better ultra-portable computing solutions than the Q1? Well, predictably, I've been doing some thorough testing to find out. As these computers are all supposed to be ultra-mobile, our first test was designed to see whether you could actually use them while on the move. I'm going to take one of my photos, crop it down a bit and attach it to an email, all while walking around Leicester Square. I began with the Q1. But first, I've got to switch the thing on, and that may take some time. The time is 3.20, and we're going on now. I haven't heard the, uh, the dreaded windows jingle yet. How many minutes is this? That must be at least three. It's all the same. Nothing's happening. It's amazing. It doesn't make Ah! <laughs> That's something. I've now got a cursor, but it's not moving. It took nearly five minutes to boot up, and that's too long. You'd have forgotten what you'd turned the thing on for in the first place. There's a variety of ways in which you can input text to the Q1, either by a touchscreen keyboard or handwriting recognition. There are also these dial keys in the corners of the screen. Cropping the photo with the stylus seemed pretty straightforward. But when it came to composing my email, I found the dial keys extremely unresponsive. The Q1 actually turned a fairly straightforward task into a bit of an ordeal. Next, I tried the little Panasonic laptop, and our relationship got off to a good start, with it booting up in a relatively sprightly minute and 14 seconds. Oh, marvellous! That's much quicker. Right, my picture's cropped and saved. This is so easy to use. It's like a world apart from the uh, Samsung, even though it's conventionally shaped. It's so light. You can still use the keyboard and use the mouse very easily. Attaching my picture to an email was effortless. And send. Bing, off we go. Migrating from a normal laptop to this would be painless, and it's much easier to use on the move. Finally in this test, the diddy little Veo UX, which also proved to be quick booting up, taking just under two minutes. But it took longer for the program to load than on the Panasonic, and it's quite difficult to see what's happening on the screen because it's just too tiny. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Shut down program, open email program. Attachment, pictures, <laughs> and send. Well, that was... Uh, Nowhere near as uh, painful as the Samsung, but uh, not as straightforward as the Panasonic. So with one test down and two to go, the Panasonic has taken an early lead. For our second test, I popped along to one of the country's leading secretarial schools. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, John. With three highly talented typists taking it in turns to use all three computers, I embarked on some dictation to see how usable the keyboards were under pressure. Right then, everybody, let's begin. From the very earliest times, comma, 
The Veo's tiny keyboard proved the most difficult to use. Despite some very elegant fingers, all the ladies struggled to hit the right keys. Full stop. New paragraph. The Panasonic fared better with the girls. The larger keyboard was easy to use, and the 10-inch screen was clearer than the Veo's. But it was the Samsung that came out on top with our secretaries. All Q1s now come with a USB keyboard as standard. Plug it in and you've pretty much got the full desktop experience. Close of exercise. Now, the modern computer's expected to entertain you as well as work for you, but have these got the power to do it? To find out whether they can cut it as multimedia machines, I put an episode of The Gadget Show onto each of their hard drives and we'll see how they perform. First, the Sony. It took about a minute to copy the media onto the hard drive from a memory stick. The screen quality is really good for video, the colours are very strong and you can just about hear it, although it would be much better through headphones. What's wrong though is the quality of the video, it actually is stuttering and juddering a bit, suggesting we're really pushing this machine to its limits. The Samsung took so long to import the clip from a high-speed compact flash memory card, I thought it was going to run out of battery. But when I finally did start viewing, it wasn't worth the wait. Well, the screen quality is uh, much worse than the Sony, and it's still juddering and jumping. It's probably worse in that respect, too. I don't think it would be a pleasurable experience to watch anything on this. So, let's go to the Panasonic. I've got high hopes for this. Importing my media from the SD card onto the hard drive was quick and painless, and I was very pleased with the results. Well, this is much better. The video is smooth, there's none of that horrible start-stop motion it was very quick to get into. And I'd be very happy to watch videos on this. So, Jason, you're almost the living embodiment of an ultra-mobile laptop <laughs> user, the perfect customer for these things. What do you think of them? I love them. The idea of having a you know, device that can do everything I need... There you go. <laughs> it's on or off or something. That was the Q1. Wouldn't you believe it? Just, just after about half an hour after telling it to close down. Um, you know, I want something that can do what I need to do, but weigh, I don't know, a quarter of my laptop weight. These devices all fit the bill. The Q1, I think, is a lovely looking device, but it just doesn't work. It's a shame. It's a real shame, but it just doesn't work. The Panasonic, for me, I hadn't seen this, and I'm intrigued now. It's a bit too expensive, I've got to say that. Yeah, and I know this is a, you know, it's not... Is it available in the UK yet? No, it's uh, definitely a personal import only. OK. Yeah. Uh, but in in every other category, it excels as far as I'm concerned. And this thing, the Sony UX, I've got to say, I'd like to spend some time with it, OK? I'll take your word for it. I don't expect it to be a very pleasurable experience trying to type an email on there, but I just want to play with it. I reckon every gadget fan watching me right now is drooling. I'd be surprised if that's not the case, because it looks gorgeous. Mm, mm, it, is, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I think in G terms, we've got to give it three Gs, because even though it might take some practice to get used to it, that screen is superb, and it's just so desirable. OK, what about the Panasonic? What's the G rating? There. Well, I mean, that's about as good as a computer can get in this sort of size and portability, and I think it's got to be worth 4Gs. OK, I'm sure yeah. Samsung aren't going to be very happy about this next score. What well, are you going to give? I mean, I'm really disappointed by this. It has to be just 1G. Oh, it really is so disappointing, even though it has the potential to be great. Driving up steps was a truly bizarre feeling. This is quite incredible. This week on The Gadget Show. Music that follows you around and broadband on your mobile. <laughs>